Okay, I had planned to introduce op amps tonight, but we're going to save that for another night. I'm running out of a bit of space on the camera. There's still 24 minutes on the camera. So we are going to look at this thing here. So this is a joystick from the 80s uh, for a variety of computers, but one of them being the Commodore 64. Now, I don't even, I don't actually know if this one works. This is a notoriously bad one. <laughs> this is the Quick Shot something 2, I think it was. What does it say in the bottom? I had one of these when I was a kid, and I don't think it was this one. Uh, and they tend to break after a while. We're not going to take this apart to see if it works or not. We can do that one night. But what I want to do is see if we can build a thing to test it, to see, to be able to find out without having to plug it in to a vintage computer. And this is going to lead in, hopefully, to a series of interesting things of A, connecting with vintage computers and doing things with vintage computers, but also uh, the joys of joysticks and joypads and things like this, and can we interface them between different computer systems, and can we do it in clever little ways. So we're going to start with the literally the simplest style of joystick out there. So inside of these things um, is some form of switch. In fact, several form, several switches. Uh, one for going up, one for going down, one for going left, one for going right, and there'll be one for the button. There'll probably be uh, these are essentially the same the same switch up here. They won't be the same switch, but they'll be the same connection. These aren't two different buttons. These are the same buttons. And there's also a thing at the bottom for auto fire, so you can make it fire continuously, uh, or you can turn that off. Uh, that probably uses, we should take these apart to see what's inside, but they probably use a 555 timer. But anyway, at the one end, they have this little plug here, which is this D-style 9-pin uh, D-sub, I think that's what they're called, um, connectors, which are commonly seen nowadays, or well, they aren't really commonly seen, but if you do see them, they usually is a serial connector for your computer, uh, which is getting harder and harder to get, because nowadays everyone uses USB. But because they still do exist, you can, so I was actually going to, you can buy these little connectors like in the bucket loads and then solder something up. But I'm feeling lazy tonight, so you can buy these little pre-made things that have these, uh, I don't even know what these things are called actually. Uh, the point that you can, you can basically attach wires really easily to these things. So this thing is all made up. And so we can plug this into here and it works all fine. And then we can plug wires into here and then plug them into our little breadboard and we're going to use some LEDs and we're going to see what we can come up with. But you might be asking, well, what do all the little pins, what do all the little holes mean on that? So on here, there are actually nine little holes. As I said, it's a nine pin. So you can see that clearly on that one. Uh, what do each of the pins represent? How do they uh, connect up? So basically, you can actually see that the, this is just kind of connecting as a switch, as a, as a, as a, that's not a very good explanation. I'm going to show you by jumping into the next step, which is this classic book here. Uh, this is the Commodore 64 Programmer's Reference Guide. So back in the day, they really gave you a lot of information about... So this is published by Commodore. So this is the Commodore 64, if you've never seen one. It's a big, bulky computer. I pull one out, but I don't think there's one right next to me, unfortunately. Uh, there's probably one reasonably close, but I can't get it tonight. Uh, actually, there's one right above me in a pristine condition <laughs> in a box, uh, but I'm not getting that down tonight. Uh, but they look like that. They have lots of keys. They're pretty chunky. Uh, and they, you can buy this book, and this book gives you all the information you can need for programming it at a very low level and at a high level. Uh, well, a relatively high level for a Commodore 64. So if you go to the, if you go halfway through it, you'll suddenly find there's all this information about how the sound chip works, and this is all about the machine language that goes inside of it, uh, and it even gives you all the memory maps information about how that works, uh, how the operating system works at a low level, and these are all the memory locations inside of the computer. <laughs> You'd never get this on a modern day computer. It doesn't make any sense on a modern day computer to have this kind of stuff available. Uh, and even if it was, it's it's hard to imagine how you can even describe it. But because everything's so abstracted, is what I'm trying to say. It's all it's all hidden away amongst everything, and this way and that way, it would be impossible to even access things directly. 
um, but you could on a Commodore 64 and so they give you lots and lots of information about that uh, and they also give you, just cutting to the back, they even give you a fold-out schematic of the entire computer so you can actually, <laughs> if you really wanted to and you had all the parts, you could build one. Uh, it even has a 556 which is, it's got, this is a 556 there but it's only, um, that's interesting, looks only like a 555, but 556 is two 55s and one chip. Uh, but maybe it's used somewhere else. I remember somebody saying it was used to sort of uh, halt things until the system was up to speed or that power was properly going through the system before everything started going or something like that. But anyway, that was quite, that's quite neat, I always thought, because you, you can just look up how the whole computer works. Uh, and this is published by, you know, anybody could buy this book. Um, I bought this book when I was a kid. This is not my original copy. I didn't buy my book. I was I b borrowed it from my dad. But uh, borrowed it meaning I kept it forever and ever. So this is not my copy. My copy is well more worn than this. But see, it tells you how to connect all the chips together. But anyway, what we're after, the timing information for the various uh, custom chips inside of it, technical details, it's all just... Um, everything but it does have a section uh, on all the on all the little all the little ports on the back so what all the little pins mean and all the little connections mean and we're going to come back to this we're going to do stuff with the uh, the serial output uh, the disk drive uh, interface and certainly stuff with the cassette interface so I'm kind of looking forward to that <laughs> if you know what a cassette tape is uh, you're going to be even more surprised when you realize that they were used to store computer programs but anyway, on this page here, it's got the pinouts for um, the joystick port. So I don't know if these pins, so right now in here it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if these match up with this. I always get confused. Do they mean when you're looking at this thing or when you're looking at the actual port? So I'm going to assume they mean looking at this. So I assume that this one here is, uh, where's my little pencil, that this here is pin 1, because that's where the picture says. And so on, and it tells you here that pin one is Joy A zero, and Joy A. So it goes Joy zero, Joy one, two, three. So these are the different directions. The pot thing is for they had these little controllers, which I don't have available at the moment, but you can turn them left and right, and they're called paddles, and they're for kind of different kind of games, uh, and they use a potentiometer essentially. But there's an interesting way of reading this. So there's no built-in analog reading port on a computer on a Commodore 64, but it does do a neat little trick, and we'll see if we can do that later on with an Arduino at one later date. This is the main button, and there's a five volts thing which you don't need just to test the directions, but you may need, um, I suspect, if you want to see if the auto fire works. Uh, to power the 555 or whatever's going on inside. And there's a the ground there. So what we really care about today are these four here, that one there, and the ground. So basically, I'm assuming if you put power in through here, and you actually... So let's just say that one's the right. I don't know which is right. So right or left so let's just say that's one of the directions and I'm pushing it now that's basically a switch and then you're closing the switch and electricity will run through to ground from there so if we have a little LED and it's coming in from 5 volts going in through here uh, and it comes out and then it will light up when you press the switch to the side if you don't know what I mean we're going to actually try it so we're going to just start by doing one thing which we'll just do a we we'll just choose the button because the button is the most is the thing on that on this joystick that is most likely to still work. And I have another one sitting on the floor, so if it doesn't work, we can try it on a different thing. But the first thing I want to know is that these pins match up with the way that it says on here. So these are nicely numbered here, but what if they're not numbered the way that it's numbered here? So it's got these little labels on it, and these are for the serial connection on your computer. So your RS232 connections. So these things don't matter at all for what we're doing. Uh, we're going to do it quite different. So sometimes you may see like old, very old computer mice, they had connectors like this. Uh, and they aren't usually, so what do I want? I want pin number 8. They aren't usually, oh it's going to have different colors for ground wasn't it? And I've just gone and lost my, my different colored wire. Here's a black one. What's this one for? That hasn't got... 
What kind of wire is this? Where did that come from? No, we're not going to use that one. Well, we could just use... Yeah. No, we're going to use these yellow ones for no reason. Yeah, it's very ill-prepared of me. Uh, where did I put my big collection of other wires? Uh, uh. Well, we're going to have a different color for it. We're going to we're going to we're going to ruin this orange one. That doesn't make sense for that. Uh, so pin eight should be the ground. And let's just pick the button, which is pin six, according to this. So I'm going to do pin six. I'm going to unscrew it for a bit. Screw terminals. Are they called the screw terminals? They're called terminals. There's something terminals. Go in the hole. <laughs> Seriously, there we go. And I think I, I think I stripped these wires a little bit too enthusiastically, but that's okay. All right. So the orange is going to ground, which is terrible. It was the only wire sitting. I'm not. I'm going to try and not ruin it too much. And that's going to go there. We're going to get a little box of LEDs and resistors. So I'm going to use what's a good color for the fire button? Blue. I don't think that's a very good color, um, but it's worth it's worth trying. All right. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to have. My little current limiting resistor there. I'm going to put this one a bit further over. And that's going to go to there. And then we're going to need a little tiny one. Now, where's all the decent little tiny ones? Oh, they're in there. All right, I buy a lot of these ones. Because they don't cost much. And they're worth it in the end. I actually feel like the fire button should be red, especially because it's red on the actual joystick. And the one thing we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get this joystick to work as a joystick on a computer, on a modern day computer, and not just a Commodore 64. So they did work on a other, so it was a, one of those rare cases back in the day when um, manufacturers actually had some sort of weird shared standard. So most things, why does this thing not go in the, I've gone and ruined that one. Most computer things back then were all like vastly incompatible with each other. <laughs> and, and so it's always really strange when two competing manufacturers use the same interface for some kind of device. And Atari, which was another um, big brand at the time, they originally used this interface here and Commodore copied it and used it. And so there were a few other manufacturers that also used it. So the two big main, the really, anyway, essentially the big, 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 big game computer companies uh, had the same interface. So you could buy the same joystick for both computers, which was not the way that everything else worked. Um, so that was quite something. All right, so we're gonna turn it on and the light should not come on. And then we're going to plug in our joystick. I don't think you, we're not going to be able to break anything severely. The only thing that might break it is if we put those two mixed up. So if we had seven and eight the opposite way around, then we could blow up the whatever chip is used to make the auto fire work on the inside of the uh, con joystick controller. But I don't think that's going to happen. Like we can't we can't really muck that up. So we'll find out. All right, so I've got my joystick and I plugged it in and I pressed the button and nothing happens. Well, that's just great, isn't it? And nothing happens when I move that around. So the best thing to do is probably to take out the ground. Just double check that I've got all this the right way around. Uh, I probably should... Uh, Actually, we'll just check that the LED works. I could have plugged it into my little LED tester, but... So that's how it should work. All right. So we could actually... We could actually cheat. <laughs> we'll cheat a little bit. Um, no, we can't be bothered cheating. Let's do this properly. Well, it's not really properly, is it? 
So, if that wasn't ground, maybe it's the opposite side. So I'm just going to assume that... I don't think they obviously go the same way, which is a bit of a pain. Oh, well, hold on. All I have to do is... No, I can't do that, can I? No, if I do that, I'm going to blow it up. Oh, this is... That's not the best way of doing this, is it? All right, well, let's just have a look at here. So what I will do is I will turn this to continuity mode. I'm not going to be very good at this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff where somebody else watches the channel and they're like, oh, there's much better, easier ways of doing this. Why are you doing it this way? Uh, there's always a trick about finding out which one is... Well, we can kind of see it on the bottom here, can't, we? can't you? Oh, I see. All right. So that's one, two, three. And that's one, three, there. All right. So the bottom one is going into uh, eight, nine. So that one there is nine. So according to this picture here, that's nine. Oh, what? That doesn't work. Hmm. Well, oh, there's a better way of doing this. There's a much, much more obvious way of doing this. All right, we can pretend to be a joystick for a second. Well, well how much time have we got? We've got seven minutes. We're not really going to get very far in this project, are we? Well, this is supposed to be a simple project. So eight was the ground. So if this was the case, so this is actually true, then looking at my picture, if I take a wire and then I make a connection, a very, very inappropriate wire for doing this, but if I do it like that... And I'm going to make a connection between pin 8, which is supposedly ground, and uh, which one did I plug it into? 6, I think it was. So I, I no, I haven't. Is this, is this, yes, I have. All good. So 6 is that one there. So it should be the 2 at the bottom. So I should be able to connect the 2 together. And the light comes. Oh, okay. Look at that. It comes on. So, if that's the case, so the numbering on this matches the numbering that I think is on here. So, why doesn't it work? Well, it might be the case that the button is just broken, which is rubbish. So, I've got this one here, which is also by the same company. This one looks a lot chunkier, and you can actually see the insides of it. And I think you can kind of see that there is a five. There is in fact a five 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 timer in the bottom corner there. Um, whoops, sorry for that. And so if we put this one in, maybe this one. Nope, it doesn't work. So we're obviously not not getting. Oh, here we go. There's a little bit of a light. Okay, it does work. Okay, this is these these joysticks are terrible. So. <laughs> I should have picked one that I knew worked, and I do have I do have some that do work, um, but I put them away. So it kind of works. It's like there's something wrong with one of these wires. You kind of have to. Uh, all right. Well, let's just add a quickly another one on to see if we can get a better result uh, how much time we got five minutes just enough time to do this so take this joystick off the table because we can assume that its fire button does not work for now we're going to come back once we've got this all working and fine so what eventually i'm going to just solder this up and make it into a proper thing but we're going to have to add a few extra components because we want to have five volts coming out on pin 7, even though we're going to run it off some various batteries. So we're going to do an introduction to voltage regulators, uh, just like they do on every other channel. So uh, it's going to be quite a while before I do things that I think have not been done on other channels, like many times. Um, but it's always good to have multiple things. So let's just do joy 1. So that's pin 1. That's pretty easy. So pin 1 is over here. What did I do with that screwdriver? It's over there. It's fine. No need to worry. Well, actually, I'm just going to take that one out. Because this is a very long wire. 
I'm going to put that one there. So the blue one's now going to be whatever that is. Yeah. Which is you could just not have to actually look at what you're doing. Which you could just go straight in. <laughs> Why do I have to look at things? Yeah. Alright, and then we're going to take that one. Well, we don't care about the fire because we just worked out that the fire button is not very reliable on either of these things. And then we're going to put that one. This is this is not looking so good. We're going to put that one there. It's not going to stay in. Stay in. All right. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to get some more. Where do I put that little box of things here? And we'll use um, yellow because yellow is fine. And we'll do the same thing again because, of course, we could do this opposite way around. We could actually have we could just plug five volts into the uh, into the device. I don't think that's going to blow up the 555 as long as you don't connect anything to the 5 volt one. Um, you never know though. But you could just do it the opposite way around. In a normal joystick that doesn't have a, 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 a auto fire, there's no complicated electronics on the inside. Um, so you could just go pretend that the ground is 5 volts and then have this going to uh, so at the moment it's going 5 volts in through the LED, through the LED, uh, resistor and then through the joystick and then back down to ground via the joystick. But you could just do it the opposite way around. But we want this to be something that can be used to test not just um, the buttons but that the, the auto... That actually might be the problem why it doesn't work properly because I've got auto fire switched on. I don't know what that means. What does N and S mean? How does that match up with auto fire? Normal, speedy, I guess. <laughs> Normal, speedy. So maybe we had auto fire on, which is why it wasn't working so well. But anyway, let's let's. It's plugged in. So this is down. So now we've got down working, and that's up. So up and down, up and down, up and down, and they work. They work well. So let's just see if the other joystick works up and down. Oh, I hit my head on the door. And then we'll finish it up there and then we'll come back again tomorrow and get it fully working and maybe I'll quickly solder it up. I don't think I'm going to do that tomorrow though. We're going to, we're going to go through, we're going to, add, we're going to finish the circuit, we're going to do the voltage regulator and we're going to check that the auto fire works. So this one works up and down as well, so that's all good. Um, so we'll make the whole thing, we'll chuck in, we'll do voltage regulators tomorrow and because this thing's already got a voltage regulator and that's what the whole point of this thing is. So it's giving out 5 volts and you want to make sure it gives out 5 volts. Uh, and we also want to put in an LED or two for the, um, the potentiometers. So we can do that as well, though I don't know if I'm going to be able to find any pedals by tomorrow. Uh, and then we can just make a little simple circuit and then I'll knock it up and put it in a little case and that will be quite fun. And then we're going to move on to more exciting things next time. So thanks for watching. I'm sure that was pretty straightforward and quite boring, but it was fun for me. So bye.